welcome to a very special modern horror. Since Halloween is right around the corner, I've been racking my brains thinking, what can I talk about that would be the most Halloween-y? And since narrowing down options is hard, I decided on a completely unordered list of my favorite horror movies. Now, this is prone to change about as often as The Wind, or Lady Gaga's Wardrobe, or whatever's topic for you folks. But for the moment, these are my favorite movies. I'm also not going to include any iconic movies or classic movies on this list, because you already know they're good. I don't need to tell you, and it just makes the list a little bit less interesting. The Exorcism of Emily Rose. If this isn't my favorite horror movie, this is probably within my top three. Well, this movie came out around the time I was a freshman in college, so the first time I actually saw it was in the middle of a dorm room at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a 15-inch CRT monitor that was thrown out because it was permanently tinted green. And the movie still scared the ever-loving hell out of me. At this point, some of the effects are a little bit hokey, and the whole black eyes dripping thing was pretty old hat. But the sound design is incredible, and the way the story is presented is really, really cool. Plus, Jennifer Carpenter's acting, the way she was able to contort her body, makes the movie really, really uncomfortable to watch, especially since she was able to do it, and they delivered it with very, very minimal CG. Also, the major props to having a movie about an exorcism gone wrong set in a courtroom at the trial of a Catholic priest without feeling religiously charged or preachy. Event Horizon. This is a close runner-up for my top spot. At its most basic level, it's just a haunted house movie set in space with liberal dashes of Hellraiser's visceral, gooey style. But few movies this side of The Thing have been more effective at maintaining a sense of claustrophobic isolation. And like few others, the characters aren't all completely dire, humorless suffer dummies or overly saccharine misery buckets. Part of the glory here is creating rich, full characters and putting them in a creepy and alien place. The weird space gothic industrial architecture of the ship never lets anyone feel comfortable, even for a minute. I've seen this movie give grown men nightmares. It's, uh, it's good. Trick or Treat. I don't think there's any other movie that quite encapsulates Halloween nearly as well as this one. The anthology twists its way through a bunch of connected stories all happening on Halloween night in small town Ohio. What's really interesting is that while the stories tend to have dark turns and endings, the main character brings an odd sort of childlike innocence to the whole ordeal. Sam, short for Samhain, is the perfect mascot for Halloween. He can capture that fun childhood mischief of the quest for candy, but he's also a brutal demon, ensuring that adults play by the rules. Trick or treat. Hocus Pocus. Okay, I'll admit this one is pure silliness, but it's so much fun to watch. Like Trick or Treat, Sometimes it's nice to have a little fun and not take things so seriously. It's a feel-good kids movie, without a doubt, but it's got magic candles, witches, black cats, and Doug Jones is a zombie. It's like every single inoffensive holiday decoration just vomited on you all at once. Plus, the cover of I Put a Spell on You is actually really cool. The Evil Dead. I'm putting this in as a two-for-one special because I love both the Sam Raimi original classic and the Fede Alvarez helmed update, just in slightly different ways. Raimi's original is a, a near-perfect B-movie. It's campy, but it's also deranged and disturbed, which elevates it above similar movies that are just campy and silly. Raimi's Deadites and Evil Dead 1 and 2 aren't evil for evil's sake. They're evil because they freaking love it and they're having the best time ever. Plus the world-famous Sam Raimi point-of-view tracking shot. The Fede Alvarez version is a great blood-soaked update that elevates the story beyond the stock, teens go to a party in the cabin, and horrible things happen formula. But I will admit that I like its Deadites slightly less. It's a great movie if you keep in mind that it's a new and original story based on the mythology from the original film, with its own characters and themes. If you try to shoehorn new characters into old roles, you'll be confused and disappointed because they are not direct analogs. Mama. I saw the original short film this was based on around the time that it came out, and it is a tense and terrifying few minutes settled firmly in the Uncanny Valley. The feature here did a really good job fleshing out the concept into a full story with really interesting characters. In an excellent move, the CG went mostly towards enhancing the ghost, while the bulk of the character was a great makeup job on a really skinny Spanish dude. While the ending is a little bit silly, Mama as a character is creepy enough to make the movie a great ride. The Innkeepers. This is a bit divisive among horror fans because of Ty West's super slow burn style. And while this movie does take ages to get going, hints of ghostly activity and uncomfortably creepy notes are dropped early and often. This consistent thread of haunting and talking about haunting 
keeps the ghosts finally appearing in the last act from being a huge tonal shift. Again, the sound design in the beginning really makes the early supernatural hints land, and I really appreciate that so much time is spent with the characters without feeling like it's dividing the movie into a character phase and then a things actually happen phase. I was definitely tense waiting for things to get going, but I think a lot of that was my own feedback loop waiting for something creepy to happen. If you can get into that state of mind, this is a really effective movie. Absentia. Mike Flanagan is probably one of my favorite directors working today. He's a pretty hot commodity now with the success of the feature-length Oculus, but Absentia is really where he got his start. It takes a pretty fine balancing act to mix real-life tragic situation and the mental strain of that with supernatural causes in a way that's both natural and compelling. Flanagan pulls it off with style. The low-budget scare scenes look really polished, and the story is very interesting. It plays on the strength of the characters, like the innkeepers, but the pacing is a lot quicker. The Conjuring. James Wan is another incredibly solid horror director. He's got a lot of restraint when it comes to building a scene, and he's really very good at just letting the camera sit in a dark room and just absorb the atmosphere. Also, his tendency to avoid false scares in favor of layering things and building a scene out of a sequence of a few creeps and jumps really makes his movies a lot more interesting than others. The Conjuring is a top-notch and very scary expressionist style with a rich and realistic world based on the case notes of Ed and Lorraine Warren. The only thing I could fault this movie on is the cheesiness of the love and happy memories saves everyone ending. Lovely Molly. This is one odd duck of a movie. It's been a few years since I've watched it, but I still think about it. It's one of those few movies that manages to be several opposite things at once. Visually, it looks gross. It's green, desaturated, and overly dark, but at the same time, it's also very clean and well-framed. Something about it is just strangely haunting, and it just hangs with you. It's undeniably creepy and strange without being overly abstract. That's not to say that it's straightforward and there's no mystery. There are definitely a few things that left me wondering. But anyway, if you're interested in a pure supernatural character-based horror, this one is well worth checking out. So there's 10-ish of the horror Halloween things that I like the most. I'm sure I've forgotten a few things and I'm going to be slapping myself in the forehead the next time I look at the DVD shelf. But in the meantime, happy Halloween, everyone. Thanks for checking out Modern Horror. I'll see you next time. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. Halloween.